So thanks everybody for joining um, and welcome to our session today, charting the course, navigating toward more engaging readings. Uh, with Hypothesis and the folks from Vital Source Bookshelf. Uh, so I'm Joe Ferraro. I lead our commercial teams here at Hypothesis, uh, but we're really here to see some of our really esteemed guests. Uh, first, we've got Nick Brown. He is the Vice President for Product at Vital Source, and we will be joined by Diana Fordham. Uh, she's a faculty member at Missouri S Southern State University. So uh, we are going to kick things off. And uh, Hopefully everybody has had an amazing time at the event over the last day and a half. I've learned so much and I'm looking forward to learning more in the next 28 minutes or so. Uh, so we're going to cover a few things. First, I want to talk a little bit about the Hypothesis Plus Vital Source Bookshelf integration. This unlocks content across all different types of course material. Super important for so many schools right now. And it's a game changer in terms of opening up interactivity across publisher content. Uh, then we're going to talk a bit about a case study that we have done with uh, a university partner here in the States on how social annotation can drive further engagement onto e-text. Uh, then Nick and Diana are going to have a great conversation about how Diana has deployed this in her courses at MSSU, and we're going to be taking Q&A throughout the entire session. Um, so there are two ways you can ask us a question. First is through the chat. I know that works because everybody told me I don't know how to share my screen, but we do have a Q&A button as well, and uh, we'll try to answer those either via text or live, depending on the question, but super excited to kick it off. So Vital Source and Hypothesis have been exploring an integration for, uh, what, the last two years now, Nick? And uh, we're really excited that this academic year we have been able to roll out Hypothesis social annotation across textbooks in Vital Source and Bookshelf by Vital Source. Uh, this works directly within your learning management system seamlessly. If you've sat in any of our other sessions over the last day and a half, uh, the integration works almost exactly the same as long as you and your students have access to the content. Uh, and it's going to really benefit in a few ways. First, by increasing critical reading and thinking. We all talk about how we want our students to read and we can't really make sure that they do. This is a really great way to allow guided reading with prompts and annotation topics to really drive engagement across the course material. Second, it's really focusing on completing the readings. I was a really good skimmer, but there was always something that I missed, and I think a lot of students are like me. This is a great opportunity to really help dive, drive further conversation, but also it's keeping students in the textbook as opposed to having them move to a discussion board to talk about the textbook or write an email. They can actually do it directly in the margins of the page across any material that they've accessed through Bookshelf by Vital Source as a Hypothesis customer. We're super excited to talk more about that. But uh, first, uh, Nick, I'll hand it on over to you. I know you had worked pretty closely with our partners at University of Texas at Austin and saw some pretty exciting results. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Um... So the, the problem that, uh, that this integration solves around trying to get students to actually complete their reading and engage deeply with the reading is one that we're very, very familiar with at Vital Source. Um, you know, we had about 18 million users inside of our bookshelf e-textbook reader platform last year, and we've got great visibility into the usage data and um, what that usage looks like across all of the courses at all of the universities that we work with. Um, and the, you know, the unfortunate reality is that often students don't complete nearly as much of the reading as you would hope, um, or, or nearly as much as you, you might assume. Um, so what we're looking at here, and, and what we kind of tried to study in the, the case study that we did at University of Texas Austin, was a really crisp before and after comparison of what the student engagement looked like inside of Bookshelf, inside of a course before implementing Hypothesis, as a way to motivate engagement and motivate better um, reading habits in their students, and after we had that, that implementation in place. Um, so we're looking at the same course, the same uh, textbook, the same instructor teaching the same material. Um, and what you're seeing on, on the screen is um, basically a, one way to roll up a student engagement and study habits across the entire semester by simply asking the question, in how many different days during that semester did they even crack open their digital textbook to do any reading at all? Um, so that's what you see on the x-axis, right, is the total number of days in the term on which that student studied. Uh, and on the y-axis, you're seeing just a, a histogram count of well, what percent of students had that number of days of study activity. So in red, you've got the, the prior version of the course. So this is uh, using the same material and this, the same professor. 
And you can see there's a lot of students on the left side of this chart. There's a lot of students where, you know, here you're seeing about 50% of them engaged with their digital textbook on seven days or less in the semester. Really wasn't a very uh, significant and meaningful part of their course experience, right? For a lot of these students, you can see 14-ish uh, percent of them opened their book on two different days to study in the term. Um, now, you might say, well, is that material really important? Is it really relevant? And if you go ask this professor, and, and um, he's got some really great quotes on the case study website, which we can share afterwards, he really does believe that reading this material is integral to the course. And he was pretty crestfallen when we showed him the first version of the data. Um, with the hypothesis integration in place, you see a huge shift to the right side of this chart. Um, we see 50% of the students engaging 36 or more days in the term, which is just a really dramatic change. Um, and any any movement to the right of this chart makes me happy, right? I'm, I'm always trying to drive more benefit for learners out of the books that they're getting. Um, so this was one pilot course, but we've seen this, um, this kind of dynamic across quite a few courses at this point. Um, as Joe mentioned, we've had this pilot live for almost two years across a few different universities, uh, multiple different subject matter areas. And we're seeing this kind of 3x or 4x around the median number of days that a student studies um, really consistently. Um, and, you know, that's the usage inside of uh, Bookshelf, but also, of course, you're starting to see that engagement and usage inside a hypothesis as well. So it's a great way where you're going to drive more of the underlying reading, which you, you care about getting done in your course, and drive more of that social discussion, which I think we all, we all believe in as well. Um, so back over to you, Joe, to talk about some of the key outcomes here. Yeah, thanks, Nick. And I think it's really important to note, the more that we can have a student engaging with the course material, the more they're going to actually be immersing themselves in the content that they need. But I mean, there's a big talk about investment and making sure that students are using the things that they need to for their classes. And so this is making sure that if you're using material, students are actually going to work on it. Uh, this was an introductory physics course, which I think is also really important to note because this is, it's a hard course. So I'll be the first to admit I failed it the first time I took it when I was in university. And it was a lot of concepts that maybe I should have had exposure to in the K-12 academic setting and didn't. I think a lot of students feel that way, especially when they're coming in for a first year university experience. You don't know what you don't know until you get there in many cases. Some of the key outcomes that we saw in this case study and in other case studies we've seen across our partnership is that students understood course material more deeply. And that's super important, especially for an intro physics course. Most students who are taking it are probably studying engineering or science, and if you don't understand the basics, that can have a real impact on whether or not you decide to persist in that major or change to another one or persist at all. But it's also one thing that we were really happy to see was students understood the purpose of the reading. They were learning from each other, and there are a ton of great quotes. We will share the link after this, but one that the instructor shared that I thought was really impactful was simply that students knew what we were talking about in the classroom when they typically hadn't at this point in the semester. So it allowed them to cover some more in-depth conversations, have more in-depth concepts so that they could be more prepared. It also really improved students' critical writing and thinking skills. And I think that this is a really important thing that we've heard through almost every session over the last day and a half is that students know how to read, but they don't always know how to read academically. And especially when you're focusing on more scholarly material, it takes time to scaffold that information. And when they can learn from each other, it can really open up the possibilities. And when all these three, three things came together, it really drove learning that took on more meaning. I mean, that meaning showed that students were understanding what was happening in the course and just makes them more likely to persist as it continues. I think a lot of folks, when they think of social annotation, the applications are pretty obvious. You think of English and you think of those types of readings, but this can work across any discipline. And I think that's one thing that I was most excited about when we had this case study with UT Austin is that this is a STEM course and we need more STEM graduates and STEM students. This is a great way to keep them engaged and keep them moving. Um, I know that we are waiting for Diana to hop on. We've had a little bit of a technical issue, but Nick, I know you were involved with this case study almost from the beginning. So what did you set out to accomplish when you started working with the folks at UT Austin? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we tried to try to tackle the fundamental problem at the, the core of what we're talking about here, which is that most students don't complete most of their assigned reading. Um, and there are you know, a few different ways that we can do that. Um, we have some tools kind of internal to, to Vital Source that we've been building as well. 
Um, but the the social annotation capability is what really hooked the professor that we were talking about here, right? There's a number of different ways you might motivate a student to go do their reading. You might say, I'm going to do eye clicker questions at the start of class. You might ask them to complete a reading journal. You might ask them to, um, you know, do, do some other instructional strategy that's going to try and drive the behavior that you'd like. Um, in this case, the professor really believed in some of the the capabilities that you're talking about here, right? And and the benefits around things like improving writing and, and critical thinking. Um, this was a, a faculty member who had actually been trying to solve this problem on their own for multiple semesters. Um, they had used another kind of social uh, e-textbook reader platform for a semester and had a lot of um, kind of frustration and pushback from their students because the, the user experience was complicated and hard. Um, and they believed in kind of the social engagement around the textbook so much that they had also implemented in a semester using two different platforms at once, right? They said, uh, I keep, I want you to read inside a bookshelf, inside of the e-reader. Um, and I, as you go do that, your homework is take some screenshots of sections of the material and copy paste them into a separate discussion platform. And I want you to go have some discussion with your peers over there. They believed in the reading, they believed in the social discussion. In that second case, what was interesting is, you know, we we paired with them, right? We we were powering their ebook reader through that that whole journey. So we had the data and we could go look at it and see kind of from a brass tacks, you know, reading behavior perspective, did we solve their problem? And the answer was yes, we did, but it was so much work for their students and it was so much work for them to go into that discussion platform and grade the discussion that they said, I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> so, you know, they had kind of achieved one of the key outcomes, which was that the students got in there and they were more engaged, but it was such a clunky experience that that they were looking for another solution. Um, so, you know, that is one of the things that we, we tried to work hard to do from a, a technical perspective as we implemented the hypothesis tool inside of Bookshelf was to just really simplify that and make it really, really easy. Easy for the student. It's right there inside of the textbook. You don't have to go do anything special. Really easy to adopt and really easy to grade for the instructor. Um, so, you know, flows those grades right into your LMS gradebook. Really easy to create your assignments. Really kind of simplify the story. Um, so it, it was great to, to talk to um, talk to that professor about that journey. I didn't even realize that we were kind of his third bite at the apple of trying to solve this, um, but it was great to hear kind of what the downfalls were before and how we could do a better job of them um, this time around. Yeah, I was actually pleasantly surprised to hear that this has been a long-term problem. Maybe that's just me as a salesperson. It's This is hard. I've worked in this space for quite a long time, and I think, especially when we think of ed tech today, one of the pros and cons is there's a tool for everything at this point. And right. so if there's a problem, there's something that could, you can use to solve it, but nothing does it in a way that you can work in your existing workflows and in the places that you're used to. And I think that's really the beauty of how this partnership was designed. If you are using a textbook from Vital Source Bookshelf by Vital Source currently, and you're using an LMS, it's two or three clicks to make sure that this integration comes to life. And suddenly students are working directly on top of the reading as opposed to having to go to even a discussion board, which is sometimes an awkward experience. If you've got the book on your screen over here and you have to jump back and forth, quotes become copy and paste, which becomes an agreement board as opposed to a discussion board. We've seen some really strong conversations as a result. Yeah, I think, you know, making it simple for everybody involved is is a really great, you know, um, great part of, of what we did here together. And I think it's important if you want to see material adoption of those tools, right? If, if you make it hard, even if it's great, you're not going to see as much engagement as you'd like to see. Exactly. And um, I guess I'd ask folks in the audience, are there things that you've tried to get students to engage with the reading, um, whether it's hypothesis or something else? And um, I mean, what's your ultimate goal when you think about assigning a reading? And you can use either the chat or the Q and A. Okay. So um, Diana has had a bit of a challenge getting connected with the event today. And I think that's one of the, the fun things about a live event. So um, I thought maybe while we wait for that, it would make sense to show how this integration works in practice. So just a minute and I can go ahead and pull that up. And so Hypothesis supports a variety of learning management systems. You see Canvas here. We also support Brightspace by D2L, Moodle, 
Sakai and Blackboard. And the experience is pretty similar regardless of the platform that you use. But um, a vital source e-text can simply be implemented as an assignment within your learning management system. And as a student logs in and launches, they need to actually log in first. Sorry, folks, wasn't expecting a live demo today. And you can see this is a reading from uh, Vital Source. It's actually uh, the Brown versus Board of Education uh, case reading. And so students have actually been able to work across this and annotate directly in the margins of the page. This lives directly in the bookshelf experience that students are used to with the hypothesis annotations living on top of it. And so it allows students not just to access the reading easily, but have the conversation directly over the margins of the page so that they don't have to jump back and forth, as I said. Um, now, this is something that folks have always wanted when it comes to annotation. I mean, in your opinion, Nick, how does this unlock more value for faculty as they use course material? Um, well, you know, one, one thing to, to note, right, is that we're, we're looking at, um, bookshelf, which if you know anyone is familiar with our e-textbook reader, you know we've had notes and highlights for years, right? Um, it's it's a feature that we've supported for forever. Um, and the reality is that students often don't take advantage of those study tools, right? Uh, you know, in much the same way that we wish students would read more, um, we've got a lot of study tools inside of our platform that we wish they would engage with more. Notes and highlights, we've got flashcards, they can search across all of the material, um, some some study modes they can come back to later. A feature that we released called Coach Me, where we add formative assessment to the book. Um, so a, a lot of these capabilities have been here for quite a while. What is different, right, and, and what um, what we unlock with Hypothesis is, um, you know, for one, the notes and highlights experience. Uh, we we really again focused on the user experience and just swap it out. So it's not like you have to learn a whole new set of tools. You know, if Joe selects some text here and wants to create a new annotation, it works almost the exact same way that you used to 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 do it in any other textbook that we have. But we're flowing it right into this social experience. Um, that social experience is something that we have not historically had, and, and we've had people ask about it, and, you know, as you mentioned, for years. So there's a, a real benefit to be able to see that kind of class discussion and respond to your peers. You can even have your instructors come in here and, and weigh in on the discussion, maybe put in a discussion prompt. There's a lot of benefits to that, that social um, dynamic layered into the textbook. Um, the the other benefit that we see here is the the gradebook incentive is a is a key part of um, of the story here. Um, an instructor can oh, perfect can jump right into their LMS um, grading system, look at that student discussion, and really quickly and easily grade whether it was a productive contribution to that discussion, whether it was maybe um, you know as Joe said earlier just an agreement board or something else. Right? Um, are are they really um, you know, to, to get a full score on that assessment. Um, mm -hmm. We know from talking to students that, um, you know, the, the impact of a grade is really important. It doesn't have to be a huge part of the grade, uh, but what if you wanna do is uh, incentivize and motivate students to actually complete all of the assigned reading, having that grade hook is an important part of it as well. Um, so, you know, where we have uh, our notes and highlights by default, you can think roughly a quarter of students will bother to, to annotate their textbook. Where we have this gradebook incentive in place and kind of your social contributions to that discussion around the text is a part of that score, uh, almost everyone participates in that that behavior. Um, mm -hmm. So the the social dynamic and the gradebook incentive are two things that uh, you know we've we've kind of had vaguely on our roadmap for a long time, and it was great to be able to check those boxes with a, a great partnership. Yeah, I know that the faculty that we've spoken to have really appreciated this because. Uh, we have someone in the chat that mentions now they currently set up timed reading quizzes online that they take on their own time, and then those are proctored. And so that's that's a couple of different steps that the person needs to take. If it's simply to get them to come over the reading and actually have conversations with their peers in the margins of the page, it doesn't feel like it's as high pressure for some students as well, would you say? And would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. It's just kind of part of their learning journey, right? It's it's not um, 
I'm going to go take this high stakes summative assessment and, and I'm feeling a lot of angst and stress about it. It's just part of their, their reading experience, part of their learning experience. It's the same thing that we try to achieve where we have our own um, completely optional formative practice items that we layer into the textbook. Mm -hmm. um, they're ungraded as well. The answers are right there inside of the book. It's it's for me, right? It's meant to be part of my learning journey. It's not meant to be um, this, this big, scary um, test that I need to take. But I do get that little nudge, right, in terms of hooking it back into the grade book on the other side. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, and so uh, we're getting word that uh, Diana is not going to be able to make it, which I'm super bummed about. Uh, we we did do uh, a webinar back in the fall, so what we can do is make sure that we share uh, that recording so you can hear about her experience in the class. But um, we, do, we do still have a few minutes, and so I want to make sure that first, is there anything that you think we haven't been able to cover, Nick, that the group might learn from, especially your position, you talk to thousands of schools, hundreds of schools a year, and probably know kind of what's the next thing that's going to happen with student reading and Sure. Yeah. So one thing that I want to highlight, and you know, we've we've touched on this a few times, but um, you know, worth worth reiterating, um, is if you're teaching a course and you know, maybe you've only assigned it as a print textbook in the past, or maybe you've assigned it as a digital textbook, but you're not really going to, to look at what that student engagement looks like or implement a strategy to try and drive positive reading behavior, I'd, I would really encourage you to do that. Um, you know, I've, I've had that conversation with a lot of schools and with a lot of faculty members who are pretty surprised at what they see. Um, that's, that's, what, that's one of the benefits that you see when you shift from print to digital is that you have some visibility into what your students are doing. Um, and th there was a really nice paper that was published last year out of University of Iowa um, that we actually weren't involved with, just to, I thought they were doing some really great work, um, where they used some of that data from their, their digital learning platform, um, along with the actual syllabus from um, hundreds of different courses. And they tried, they analyzed a very simple metric, which is um, what percent of the assigned pages of reading did each student read on average? Um, and they looked at that across kind of two different cohorts of instructors. They looked at instructors who didn't implement any, um, they called it an instructional strategy to drive reading um, versus those instructors who did implement an instructional strategy. And, you know, the, the strategies that folks have mentioned in the chat are the, the kinds of things that fit that bucket, right? Do, uh, do reading quizzes online. I'm going to do quizzes in class. I'm going to do um, eye clicker questions or, or any of these other things. Um, and what we're looking at here would fit in that bucket as well, right? Um, social annotation, simple, right there inside of your textbook um, that I'm encouraging you to complete. Well, that's that's a really nice reading strategy as well. And the scary number that I want people to hear um, that, um, you know, I look at it as a, a big problem for us to help solve at Vitalsource is that instructors who didn't implement any strategy to really motivate student reading inside of their textbook saw their students read on average 14% of their assigned pages of reading. Um, you know, they're not coming to class prepared. The students aren't getting good value for a textbook that they paid for. They're certainly not learning all of that material from that book. Um, and, you know, you might wonder, are those pages really required if that's the behavior that we're seeing out there? You know, I think case studies like the one that we see here and, and some others that we've seen with other faculty show that, oh, those, there's value in the other 86% of pages, right? They're assigned for a reason. They're required for a reason. Um, and it's on us as tool providers and in partnership with um, folks like faculty that, to actually motivate better behavior there. So where we see, you know, again, call, call back to our case study today, 3Xing and 4Xing of student reading, um, that's that's drawing down that difference, right? That's students coming to class prepared, students actually learning the material, um, students getting bang for their buck out of their their hard spent dollars on course materials, um, and that's you know that's why we're excited about this partnership. There's there's a, a big problem to solve there. Yeah, and I can say we we're super excited about it. And so one of the benefits of a hypothesis subscription is if you're currently a hypothesis subscriber and work with Vital Source in their um, first day access or inclusive or equitable access, this should work just fine with the integration that you have. But we're also opening this up to non-subscribing uh, schools through their inclusive and equitable access programs. Uh, and it doesn't just allow you to annotate on top of the 
material from Bookshelf by Vital Source, but also all the other material that we cover. Think YouTube videos, PDFs, web pages. And so what it really can do is give you a one-stop shop to cover social collaboration and annotation across all of the learning material that you have in your course. So again, getting away from using multiple tools for multiple purposes and letting it all live in one place, and that's the LMS. Uh, we did have a question from uh, the audience, uh, if Hypothesis is working on partnering with other textbook platforms. Um, I mean, for one, we're here with Vital Source, and we're really happy with the partnership, but we also do understand that folks want options, and so we want to make sure that we can cover, as our long-term strategic goal, support any sort of academic material that could be covered. And so, as I mentioned, uh, we have rolled out this new vital source option, uh, starting four courses running this summer, and especially for this fall, if you are an inclusive or equitable access school, I'm sure that your bookstore is chasing you for those course materials because they say you're late. But uh, you can actually add a hypothesis directly into your course without a full institutional agreement. It does include your course level reporting, and it does also, because it's inclusive or equitable access, it saves you some of the hassle of going through some of the budget requests that you might take. Typically do. And so that pricing starts at $20 per student per semester. And it's a great opportunity to continue to move forward from there. And so I know we've got about three minutes left. Um, and just want to make sure there are no other questions that we can answer. And uh, really excited to see uh, Dr. Rodriguez is going to kick this off. Uh, you can definitely reach out to our, our team, uh, you know, Christy, Lisa, Gina, those are probably the three of those names or one of them probably sounds familiar for you. They can make sure you have all the information you need to kick this off and have a successful semester combining a bookshelf with hypothesis. Well, with that, I uh, want to thank everybody for uh, joining. And we've got another great session starting in just a few minutes. Thanks so much for joining today, Nick. Uh, it's always great to chat about these kinds of things. And uh, we will make sure that we get the link to the recording with uh, Diana Fordham from this past fall so you can hear her perspective because um, she's seen some really transformational change in her courses and I think it'll benefit everyone to understand how she's doing it. Thanks for having me, Joe. Yeah, thanks.